Hey guys, welcome back to another Imagine Four tutorial. Today it's just going to be another quick one where I'm just going to be showing you how to do a very basic kind of binocular system where you're just going to be able to zoom in. So when the player holds down a button, they're going to zoom in and they might have a little bit of a vignette effect around the camera as well. So we're going to be basically zooming in and zooming out the camera. So I'll show you what it's going to look like now. So in the game, if I hold down one, whatever button you like, I'm just going to zoom in like this. So we, you can see we have a kind of vignette around the camera and we're just going to be zoomed in looking like this and our player speed has also decreased so we're not walking as fast. If I let go, it's gonna go out like so. And you can see as well, it's not just snapping, it's kind of a smooth transition zooming in and out, and then vignette coming in and out as well. Nice and smooth like this, and I think this looks kind of good. So again, you can use this for whatever you like. You can use this for binoculars, a telescope, just a normal zoom, or a scope on a gun, anything like that. You can use this for whatever you like. So this is what we're gonna be doing today. I'll delete the code and I'll show you how I've made this. So our first step is going to be to open up our character blueprint, as that is where all of this code is going to be. So for me that's the third person character, which again for me is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you this could be first, third, whatever you've named it. In here, what we want to do is we want to create an action mapping. So what I'm going to do to make that, I'm going to go to edit, project settings. Once this loads, I'm going to go all the way down to input on the left here, open the action mappings, I'm going to hit plus action mapping there. I'm going to name this one zoom. You can name this whatever you like, but that makes the most sense for me. And then I'm going to make sure that I set this to Z. So I'm going to set this to the Z key, but you can set this to whatever you want. So you can set it to Z, X, 1, control, left mouse button, right mouse button, absolutely anything you want. This is just where you'd put that. And the benefit of doing action mappings is we can have multiple buttons, we can set it up for different consoles, and we can also set up action mappings in here. So once you've done that, we're going to close that, and then back in the event graph of our character here, we're going to right click and we're going to search for what we just named that. So I named mine Zoom. So you can see there we have action events Zoom like so. Now of the press of this, what I want to do first is I want to slow down the player. So they're going to be walking slower when they're zoomed in. Because obviously when you're zoomed in, naturally you either don't move or you're walking slower as obviously you've got a different perspective. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop in the character movement up here like so. Out of this we're going to drag out and we're going to set max walk speed like that plugging that into the pressed like so. The max walk speed of this, I'm just going to half the player speed. So by default, the player speed is 600. So I'm going to set this to 300. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate that and plug that into the released like so. A character movement again, I'm going to target. And this is now going to be going back to default. So I'll set this to 600. You can customize these again to be whatever you like. I'm doing it this way so that it is hold. So you hold down the button to zoom in. If you want it so that you toggle it instead of hold, what can you do? You can just drag those out disconnect them and out of the press we're going to get a flip flop A will go into our top set walk speed B will go into the bottom this is going to toggle it so the flip flop just changes between two different states of A and B so you can do that but I want to have it as hold not toggle so I'm going to leave it as this you can choose which way you do it then out of the top set max walk speed here off of pressed what I'm going to do is going to drag out of that and add a timeline so add timeline like so I'm just going to call this zoom. The top is going to go into play, the bottom set max walk speed is going to go into reverse. And so what this does is when we're holding it, we're going to play the timeline. When we let go, we're going to reverse it, meaning play is going to zoom in, reverse is going to zoom out. So now let's set up that function. So what we're going to do is going to open up the timeline by double clicking it. The length here is how long you want this to take. So I want this to take half a second. So I'll put that as 0.5 as the length is in seconds. Again, this is just how long you want it to take. Then we're going to add a float track by pressing the little F there. And I'm just going to name this zoom track like so. Again, you can name this whatever you like. On this track, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, add key to curve float, time zero, value also zero. I'm going to right click, add another key, time being the maximum length. So whatever you set your length to, set that for this. So for me, that's 0 0.5. The value we're going to put is one. Compile, and if we press these two buttons here, it's zoom to fit horizontal and vertical. So this is what our timeline looks like. It's just going from point A to point B. So this will play going up and reverse going back down. That's just going to go between two values. So we close that timeline. Let's set up those values. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and get a lerp, just a normal lerp, so under float, plugging the alpha into the zoom track there. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the value of the track going from zero to one and plug that into the alpha. And the alpha is going to get a value between A and B which we're going to set up now. So this value here is going to be how zoomed in we are. 
So what I'm going to do is if you select your follow camera here and then you search for field of view, you can see that the field of view is 90. So by default, it's 90. And now that's pretty standard in most games, the field of view will be 90. Obviously, if you've changed it, just put the A value as your default FOV. So for me, that's 90. And then the B one is going to be the zoomed in value. So for me, that's going to be 15. And I found that out earlier. So the lower the value, the more zoomed in it is. The higher the value, the more zoomed out it is. So you can customize that to get it perfect for you. I'll show you what 15 will look like. So to test this, you just simply change the field of view in the top right up there, compile it, and then hit play. And then you can see this is what it's going to look like when it's zoomed in. So I think that's good for me. Again, customize this for however you like. If you have kind of different scopes, you've got two times, four times, eight times, anything like that, you can change these as well. So I'm going to reset that to 90 and put 15 in there. Then with this LURP, we want to be going between these values to set our field of view. So we need to set the field of view. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a reference to our camera in here. We're going to come out of that and we're going to set field of view. It's that simple. That is going to plug into the update of the timeline. So as it is updating, it's going through, it's changing the value. And the in field of view is going to be the return value of that LURP. So it's going to be getting the value between those two values based on the timeline track there and it's going to set that to be our field of view. And that is basically the basic part done. However, I also want to be creating a vignette effect. So to do that, I'm going to select the follow camera here and I'm going to search for vignette. So let's select the follow camera in the components list, sorry, and then search for vignette. And you should have this screen come up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick vignette size and tick vignette intensity. By default, I'm going to leave the vignette size as 200 and the intensity I'm going to set to 1.5. Again, you can customize this to get it perfect for you. And if you put it as that, compile and minimize, hit play, you can see what this is going to look like. Although, sorry, it's not showing up because of one thing. Uh, you won't have this issue. This is just because I've changed it. So what I did is I set the post-process blend weight to zero. If I put that back to one, there we go. I just forgot to delete that. We'll do that in a minute. So now, again, we can test this out. So you probably won't have had that issue. So now we hit play you see you get the vignette effect around it like so. So that works great. I think that kind of vignette effect was good for me. You can obviously change it to get it perfect and better for you, but this is the one I'm going with. So once you've done that, you've got the customization and the effects and the values you want. We're gonna leave them like that, but we're gonna search for post-process now instead. And we're gonna change the post-process blend weight from one to zero. And what that does is it basically just means that it's turned off so we don't have it. Now we're doing this just to more easily change between all the values. So once you've done that, what we can do is we can drag out the follow camera again where we're setting the field of view. And now we can also set post process blend weight. We can just plug that into the set field of view there as we want to do it off of the update. And in actual fact, we can just take the in post process blend weight and plug that straight into the zoom track. And we don't need a LURP because the zoom track is already going from zero to one, which is what we want. We want it to be at zero and go to one and then be at one, and go back to zero. So that will work perfectly like so. So if we compile and save, that is the code done. So what we're gonna do is when we hold down our zoom button or for you, you can have it as toggle, we're going to slow down the character. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna create a vignette effect. When we let go or untoggle it, we're gonna go back to our normal speed. We're gonna reverse this. So we're gonna be zooming out and getting rid of the post-process volume again. So the vignette effect. So let's test this out. If I hit play, you can see that we don't have the vignette. We're not zoomed in. It's perfectly normal as it should be. And if I hold down Z, which for me is my zoom button, we're gonna zoom in and the vignette effect will appear like so. And this works perfectly. We're all fully zoomed in. We've got the vignette and this looks great. If I let go, it's gonna smoothly transition and smooth out. Again, this works absolutely wherever you want. And this works great, looks great as well. And again, the smooth transition just makes it look a lot better than just snapping in. And the vignette effect as well just adds that little extra something. So it actually looks like you're looking through something and not just your vision has been zoomed in. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created this basic kind of binocular effect or zoom in, zoom out effect for a scope, camera, anything that you want and it works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you find it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.